Uh, and uh, and now what, what we've uh, done is we've asked uh, Rebecca Langu to uh, uh, come up with something to top that. So if you want to put up on stage. Why did I go last? This is so, well, you're all going to be disappointed. I know, so that's what we do. Let's, let's just set the bar low, shall we? I just wanted you to come up, because uh, uh, it's been a while since I've seen you. Uh, Rebecca Langu, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, I miss your birthday. Yes. Uh, you want to miniature golf course? I for did. Birthday. How was it? It was hot as fucking hell. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> now, is there any one uh, memorable moment on the course itself that you remember? Is there a story to be told about that? Uh, uh, off the course. Uh -huh. um, about two weeks before my birthday, my birthday's in August. Uh, one of my friends, her six-year-old boy had a birthday, and he had a she planned for him a superhero themed birthday party where all the children came and made their own capes and got to wear them and got to solve a crime with a villain in a cake. I won't go into it, but it was awesome. <laughs> but, but that guy's getting a little bit of a semi from the store. <laughs> <laughs> and it was super awesome. And I, I was very sad because I was jealous of the six year old's birthday party. And as I was sitting eating a hot dog between golf rounds uh, and telling and regaling everyone else with this story, two hands come around my neck and attach a cape. Aww. And this child's mother made me my very own superhero cape, which was made out of polyester and was hot as fuck. <laughs> but I wore it, and it was awesome. Thanks, so. thanks for, hey, thanks for uh, bringing me up to speed. Thanks. <laughs> the stage is yours. Um, I'm, I'm going to give the audience a choice. Um, First one. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Because they're both lacking in some way, is what I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> this, this is a story. This is part of the story. This is a story uh, that is prepared, but is missing an essential ingredient in the end because it is usually followed by an acoustic song, which there is neither an acoustic <laughs> instrument nor someone who can play it here. We can sing it. We can play it. You could try. So that's option one, song with Dada Grizzle playing an acoustic song. <laughs> um, or I can read the first part of a uh, a book that I um, love. It's called Bad Girl. It was written in 1928 by Vina Del Mar. Not her real name. Um, but instead of reading the whole book, I'm only going to read the first and last paragraphs of each chapter. <laughs> I kind of want to see both. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well, we do have time. It's not like I'm fighting for space. So. I, I'm intrigued about the song, Rebecca. Is it a particular song? It is. It is the Smith song. Uh, please, please, please let me get what I want. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dada Grizzle, is that in your wheelhouse? <laughs> All right. Why don't, I, why don't I tell the story first? How about that? And then if you're still rubbed up, We'll, we'll enter the 20s. A uh, picture, if you will. A small dorm room circa 1987, a college town somewhere in the great state of Illinois. Four walls of concrete blocks painted over an industrial off-white. I had finished high school with the satisfying notion that I would wait for college. This is a story about sex. Did I mention that? <laughs> <laughs> that I would wait for an intellectual man. I would wait for a creative man. I would wait for a sharply witted man. I waited three days. <laughs> <laughs> in the room, a young man of 19 stands in profile at the end of the bed. He stands, if memory serves, fully naked, in front of a stereo, sifting through a pile of CDs. As I lie in bed with the covers pulled all the way up to my chin, I look at him. And while this is likely the first time I've ever seen a man completely in what my grandmother referred to as the buff, <laughs> what I re recall immediately isn't that he was naked, although I'm sure I stared bug-eyed at uh, the spectacle of his anatomy 
uh, on display before me. But the only image that my brain can register is watching him carefully make his musical selection, and then the precise way in which he put the CD into the drawer mechanically and opens and closes. And then there is music. Uh, what that music is, I can't exactly say for sure. I, I can narrow it down. Because Big Papa only had two CDs on that playlist. <laughs> it was either Rumors, the 11th studio album by British American rock band Fleetwood Mac, <laughs> or the soundtrack to Amadeus. <laughs> now I'd like you to take a moment, and I'd encourage every one of you, at some point in your life, and I really hope you take this small piece of advice to heart, to throw caution to the wind and uh, fuck your brains out to Mozart. <laughs> because nothing makes sexy more like an otherworldly event than having oboes come in right as you're reaching climax. <laughs> I mentioned the bassoons, but some things you just gotta discover. <laughs> in fact, I dare you not, I dare you to have sex while listening to symphony number 25 in G minor and not believe with every fiber of your being that Mozart specifically wrote it to underscore your ride on the really longest glass elevator. <laughs> I'll say it. Mozart is the symphonic equivalent to Al Green's greatest, greatest hits, volume one and two. But I digress. That very first night we were together, I'll admit I didn't even notice the music. There was some other shit going down and that pretty much had my full attention. But it was in the background. It was a lovely undercurrent to the proceedings. Uh, years later, looking back, it occurs to me that we may have been doing it to a requiem. A requiem. Do we have water? Yes. Yes, right here. <laughs> Dropping out. <laughs> talking about sex things with you. I'll leave it as enough. <laughs> requiem via the Roman Catholic Church. A mass for a deceased person. A musical composition for such a mass. A hymn, a composition, or service for the dead. In music, a mass for one or more dead persons containing biblical passages and prayers for the admission of the dead into heaven. Okay, so uh, maybe we weren't listening to a death hymn the first time I did it. Maybe, maybe we were listening to the critically acclaimed Grammy Award winning rumors. <laughs> which sold at least 40 million copies since its release in 1977. It is, after all, the 10th best-selling album in, you know, music history. Uh, I mean, there are a ton of kick-ass songs on that album. <laughs> like, You Make Love and Fun, which, incidentally, Christy McVie wrote about her boyfriend, who was also Fleetwood Mac's lighting designer, who she just happened to start banging right after she split from her husband and bandmate John McVie. Huh. Okay, so maybe it was Go Your Own Way, <laughs> and by Lindsey Buckingham, a song he wrote about his bandmate Stevie Nicks, with whom he had just ended an on-again, off-again romantic relationship. Fuck. Did I mention <laughs> that during the record recording of the album, Mick Fleetwood discovered that his wife was having an affair with his best friend? Yeah, so these are my choices. <laughs> I can either recall that the soundtrack of my first sexual experience was a record about romantic, romantic dysfunction, personal turmoil, anger, recrimination, and loss, or a death hymn. Wow, that usually gets a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing is, the boy never asked me what I wanted to listen to. For two years, the boy never asked. And while I grew to enjoy the ever-present one-two punch of the pop rock feel of the chain, <laughs> and the powerful orchestrations of Don Giovanni, not to mention the fact that either was a pretty good in indication that at least two people in the room were getting lucky that night, <laughs> I definitely would have enjoyed a third option. And so, I choose to rewrite re my history. I want to pull the covers back up to my chin, look at the make naked man at the end of my bed, and dream of a different track. A song still as melancholy and infused with suffering and longing because obviously that works for me. <laughs> but one that my 18-year-old self, had she been sifting through her own CDs, would have fully embraced. I choose Morrissey. I choose the Smith. And I dedicate a new wave sex dirge to that girl still hanging out under the sheets.